As an electrical tutor, I hate people putting out misinformation, right? It does my tits in, right? This is for anyone who's young, training, learning, yeah? IP rating. IP stands for international protection. On any single exam, you are taking the electrical trade. That is international protection it's referred to as. Let me show you some misinformation. In my research for a follow-up to John's video, I f this comes up, so I just left it playing in the background, yeah? Because EV chargers are designed to be installed outdoors, they all have a rating, which is called their IP rating. Some people say it's ingress protection. That's the one I'll vote for. Other people say it stands for international protection. Uh, all sorts of crazy fake news stories out there about what the IP rating actually stands for. You seem pretty confident, don't you? You seem pretty fucking confident putting videos out. I fucking hate this. It's not just, I'm not picking on Jordan. I fucking hate this kind of shit. Don't put out misinformation like that. Say, I say in a lot of my videos, I'm loose on facts, yeah? This is for entertainment purposes, yeah? That was clearly someone in the electrical trade saying IP stands for ingress protection and everyone else is doolally. Right, let's put this fucker to bed. I promise you, I have not looked in this book today. I've just got the book out. Yeah, I'm working on what I know. Honestly, I'm not fucking lying. Part two, tabbed up, look, as per my very popular video on YouTube, yeah? Definitions. Don't look in the list of definitions because it won't be there because you've got the definitions in the regs, which are all like the, your encyclopedia, sorry, your dictionary. Then you'll have the um, numbers for, like, the mathematics. I'll just flick through this. Probably should have done this in advance. But honestly, there's all your symbols for your mathematics, look. Then the next one's the definitions, look. Abbreviations used in BS7671. Come down to IP. IP, International Protection Code, is defining 412.2.2.3. International Protection. IP, International Protection. As far as I'm aware, I've wrote that there because it's an answer to a question in an exam, yeah? It never mentions International Protection there. It now refers to it because it's been defined in the front of the book. It only refers to it as IP thereafter. It never says International Protection again because it's defined in the abbreviations in BS 7671, and if I'm not mistaken, this is the latest current amendment. I'm not just digging jaw now, I know it looks like it sometimes, but he does sell a business course, so he's selling his advice, he's, he's, he's coming from a point of, I know what I'm on about, yeah? Clearly in that video, rather than just say, it used to be called ingress protection, but now it's actually defined as international protection, in a 10 second check in the Bible book that we all fucking work to, it's literally wrote down, he's actually gone out there to say how clever he is now, he's better than everyone else, and now he's told you what it is in its ingress protection. And if you went and did an exam, and you'd literally casually watch that video in the background, you'd be so sure that he apparently knows what he's doing, you would write international. Uh, you'd write ingress protection, wouldn't you? Well, and the actual answer, as per BS 7671, is international protection. Some people say it's ingress protection. That's the one I'll vote for. Other people say it stands for international protection. Uh, all sorts of crazy fake news. Don't believe... Anything you fucking see on the internet, yeah? Don't believe anything I say. If I say something, you're on an exam, right? You need to be getting the book out and referencing it. Your brain is stupid, but the book, as long as it's the latest edition, will always be right. Always reference your work because black and white is king. Some people say it's ingress protection. That's the one I'll vote for. Other people say it stands for international protection. Uh, all sorts of crazy fake news stories. Have a little bit of respect for your viewer. Check your sources, if that's wrong, how much of the shit in your videos is wrong, yeah? That will cost someone a, 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 a question in exam, yeah? I'm not fucking looking for the trouble. It just popped up and I was like, that's fucking definitely wrong. That's definitely wrong. It may have been something else, but it's not that now. So fucking, yeah, don't bother credit me if you, if you correct yourself, like, just say you fucking found out, but... There you go, enjoy. I always say my videos are fast and loose, not full of facts, but should uh, someone ask me a genuine question or I'm doing some actual design, because that's what I do, yeah? Here's my technical library. This here, it's not very big, it doesn't need to be, but this is my technical library. This is where I keep all my old regulations look, so I can reference old regulations when I'm looking at old inflations. There's all the latest stuff. There's various technical bibble bubbles, code of practice, all that kind of shit's kicking around, look. And I clearly mark my books, look, that this one is an old one, it's been superseded, that's why it's out to get the new one, yeah? If someone's going to ask you a fucking technical question, you absolutely, and I'll say this one more time, you absolutely reference it. I'm just doing an EV job. And over here, because of the time the insulator was put, yeah, under here you'll find the electrical vehicle charge equipment, fourth edition, because the job I'm doing, what the date of the test certificate, this was the document used. 
So I reference it against the document used at the time, not the latest one. Fuck you, get a grip, you can't on this left. And Jordan, this is for you if you're watching this. I don't hate you, right? I just fucking... Obviously, you're a very prominent YouTuber and stuff like this shouldn't be a misinformation, yeah? The video's called Five Mistakes Everybody Makes When Installing EV Chargers, right? I appreciate that's how you make money, that's your content, yeah? But if you're going to put out a video with five mistakes plus the six bonus mistakes that are here, yeah? You've not even started the video yet. You're still actually doing your intro and you've already got a glaring error in your video. So, like, there you go. Seven mistakes now, one of them's yours. But yeah, just fucking correct it. Like, it's wrong. It's fucking wrong. It does my tits in. Then I'm on courses, people going, no, no, it's not. It's this because I've seen it on a video. Fuck your videos, not yours. You're not just yours, everyone's, yeah? When you're in the classroom doing an exam, you listen to fucking me. I'll tell you what's going off, yeah? Because I'm a fucking big brain. Back of it to maintain the IP rating of the casing, and that's all detailed in the manufacturer's instructions, but if you haven't read the instructions or you haven't been trained properly, it could be easy to miss and just ruin the IP rating of this enclosure. The other thing is just to make sure that you actually... The other thing is it's clear stating the Zappi instructions on the training that those should be calibrated with a um, torque screwdriver because over or under tightening affects the IP rating. And in this video, you don't do that. When you're putting the lid on, make sure it's all sealed properly. On to the, the correct torque setting. The outside... That the which you're not doing the seal is sitting in place properly and that everything is never mind here you'll see a place for the cable entry now some installers i've seen will literally just drill a hole in the back of this and thread the cable straight through without any kind of sealing without any kind of grommet or compression gland and what that means is that even though the enclosure is ip rated you've completely compromised the IP rating of the device and water can come into the back through the hull, dust can come in, insects can come in. And I've seen some terrible examples of this over the years. You are absolutely correct, but, but you see that copex coming in there behind your hand? 60 amps, main fuse. Or they <laughs> maybe have a <laughs> Where's the, where's the gland? Where's the gland? The insects are getting in luck. Honestly, it's, Hypocrite electrical. Outdoor consumer units. There's been a hot debate in the industry lately because some cheap EV charger installers will just throw an outside consumer unit in. And there's a lot of people saying that they're not compliant. The RCDs are not designed to work in such cold temperatures. You've got issues with condensation, pollution ratings of the consumer units. There's loads of things to do with that. Now, this don't, don't credit me, mate. I've only been banging out on my podcast to the industry and putting videos out for years, you know what I mean? But never mind. This is just to illustrate, this is the type of consumer unit that people are putting outside. Now, this is a plastic one. Sometimes they're metal. This one's just got a main switch, a surge protection device, and an MCB. Now, that would never be compliant because it needs RCD protection for an EV charger. But this is kind of what they look like, and people just stick them next to the meter box. Have you ever done that as a company is the question. Have you ever done that? in order to avoid having to come off the main house consumer unit if it's not compliant, or in order to not put a consumer unit in the meter box, which is not really allowed. I just hate that, and we would never do it that way. Never? Never? You'd never do that? Are you sure? This is a whole can of worms, this place. There's a lot of upgrades to do. This is the old garage consumer unit. There's a, another dodgy kind of old consumer unit up here cables just lashed in but you know all of this was done by an electrician apparently so you, you can see the dangers of not getting somebody who really knows what they're doing uh, and that right is excellent work yeah putting stuff like that in your videos that shows the general public that is shit when you're saying that shit that's great that people respect your opinion yeah and and, and showing that gash gravity fixings holes and stuff and saying it is bad is absolutely great for the industry and every electrician so, like, commend for that, but like, it, it does help cover the mistakes, but it's hard to explain to a normo that this stuff is crap because it's hanging off. So, yeah, fair play for that. That YouTube thinks you might enjoy. And why not click the link below to join our school electricians community? And obviously, if you're going to join the school thing, great, do that. That's your bag. But why not join the ESK, the Elite Sparking Crew on the WhatsApp? You can message me on there and I'll send you the link because that's where all the cool sparkers hang out. The ones that like saying and bugger. A few people have messaged me and said the IEC standard references ingress protection.
Plot twist, then someone who checked for themselves in their BSEN 60592 or the IEC 1989 checked and confirmed that in that standard it is actually standing for international protection. Great. Your mum's fucking toaster instructions might say, why didn't I say your mum's dodo instructions might say ingress protection, but all I'm bothered about on this channel, because it's called apt electrical content and it's sort for electricians is, what BS7671 says. So I'm not saying it weren't called it before. What I'm saying is, if you are in the electrical trade and you reference BS761 as your main document, which most working electricians will, you need to use the definition as defined by that document. If you work in shipping or you work in fucking, I don't know, whatever, spaceships, and they define it in their document as a different thing, use that. But in the context of this channel and the people that I normally speak to, the definition is international protection. Any exam you do, that's what the answer is going to be. And that's what it has been. I've seen people get that wrong and lose a point. 